Welcome to um, Homemade Toys for Toddlers. My friend Toby here and I are going to talk a little bit about some things today that you can do with Play-Doh. Now Play-Doh is just kind of obvious, right? And hopefully this will be like a really boring one because you've done all these. But if not, there'll be a few tips or suggestions or ideas to help you spark interest and creativity in your children. And that's the whole point of these um, videos and these programs about homemade toys for toddlers. It's that it doesn't take anything expensive to entertain your children. So let's get started. Now, if you have the Play-Doh brand of Play-Doh, that's fine. The one suggestion I have for younger kids if you are needing to buy some for your kids is to get the little containers because that for younger kids, because those are just so much easier for the children to deal with. If you have the big ones, fine. And, or if you're going to make some, that's fine. Um, but I just suggest with the younger, the kid, the less you give them, it just becomes overwhelming. So, but the programs, I mean, in the programs, I start with things to do with younger and then kind of work up to harder ones. So let's say you have an 18 month old or anyone, any age kid that you trust that will use their hands with this and not just try to eat it. Obviously this is not gonna hurt them if they eat it, even the homemade stuff, but it's not the sort of stuff you wanna water this in the bottom of their gut, right? Okay, so that being said, you give them a little bit and then the first thing you're gonna have them do is just have them squish it and in both hands and just encourage them to squeeze it because they're not gonna know. So squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and then squeeze it with the other hand. If it's a nice day or you don't mind, if you have a, the kind of floor that you don't have to worry about, put it on the floor and let them step on it with their feet, their bare feet to see what it feels like. Now, of course, some kids are gonna think this is really, really cool and some kids are gonna run screaming because it's too sensually weird. So just give it a try and see what, if they can even squish it with their toes. So after that, then just have them pull off little pieces and developmentally that is a very good thing for their little hands. So they can just pull it and try to have them make little bitty pieces. And then if you give them a cup or a bowl to put those in. Oh, there you go, you can't see it down here out of your sun, like make it into little pieces. We're not worrying about making balls right now that for the younger ones, it's just pulling it apart and putting it in. See how small they can get it. And if they get it into microscopic pieces, that's okay. You want to give them a cup so that they have something to aim at. And that's part of the excitement. Because if you just put it on the table pretty soon, that will be boring. And it's going to be, then they're going to start want to see what happens if they throw it. So give them something to an aim for. Another really good idea in Play-Doh is a tray. Now, these are just your standard McDonald's fast food restaurant trays. That you can purchase these, but keep your eyes open on um thrift stores and yard sales and such and see if you can find some of these. Um, and if you don't, a, a, a cookie sheet works fine. These work well because they have an edge. And this is really good for younger kids to help them visualize, this is where I keep my work. This is where I keep my artwork or my Play-Doh work. And if we call it, I'm getting a little off off topic, but if we call the, the things that they do work instead of always play, it takes on a level of um, seriousness to them. Mom goes to work, dad goes to work, grandma goes to work, aunt Sally goes to work. I have work that I can do too. And so they can sit at the table with their tray doing the things that we call play because to a child play is their work and work is their play, that they can do it right here and you can just remind them, no, you need to keep your work on the tray and uh, pretty soon it'll be no big deal. But anyways, back to this, if they can tear it into little bitty pieces, that is good. And that might take them, 
that might occupy a lot of time or they might quickly lose interest. You will just see. But then we all know how to naturally do this. In fact, that's what I was just kind of doing. But to show them that if they take a big piece and squash it into a little piece to help them pick up the pieces, that becomes pretty fun. But a child is not necessarily going to do that when it's time to clean up unless you've shown them how to do that. And the more that they can do for themselves, the better. So then they push it, squish it together and then try to have them squish it together to make it um, a small clump and then they can put it back in the container. All those things they can do on their own. Now, as the children get a little bit older, I mean, they've already done the pulling it apart stuff. Now you wanna have them pull off a, a chunk and see if they can roll it. Now, again, this is obvious, but this is so much and it takes a little bit of explaining how to do it, that their hand has to be stiff like a board, not soft like, like a marshmallow. Make their hand stiff like a board and then it's easier to roll it rather than when their hands are all soft. You can also have a cup or a bowl and after they've made some, put it in the bowl and make a lot of them. And you can say, because this is blue, you might say, today let's make a bowl full of blueberries or a bowl full of cherries or a bowl full of oranges or I don't know, peas, anything that you can think of that is that color and round. It doesn't have to be a fruit. Let's make some blue marbles. Let's make some tiny balls. But then they make those and they can put them, or if they're on their tray, if you have a, a little bowl on the side, um, they can make it. After they have made it, or in addition to making it in your hands, of course they can do it on the table. That ends up making something that looks a little bit more like an egg. And that is a good thing to learn how to do, but you will want them to try both ways. The, in their hands with their nice stiff hands makes it round. On the table around will make it more flat like an egg. But maybe you wanna make some eggs and I happen to have this blue that you're gonna make some robin eggs. So make that and they can go out and find some sticks and some grass and even you know, try to make a nest on their tray or put it in a bowl and put some eggs in it. So after they have made their balls, obviously squish them down and those can be cookies. But in addition to just making cookies, maybe you wanna take a fork and you can make the designs on it. Well, it's not hard, it's not easy to see, like peanut butter cookies. And then in addition to that, they let them use a spatula and as they practice learning how to scoop it up onto the spatula and then put it on another tray or a plate, whatever it is you want to have. Um, one fun thing there is if you have a box that's big enough that when they have put some on their plate or their tray or whatever, now they can put it in the oven. And it would, it's, if it's something that really resembles an oven where they can put it inside, that's a little bit better. But I'm getting a little off the subject of um, Play-Doh. Another thing they can do with, if, after they've made it a ball, is to try to smash it with something. Now, this is gonna be difficult because I'm holding it up where you can see. But if this is on the table, they could take the bottom of the cup and hit it when it stops moving hit it to make it flat, hit it with a spoon. Whatever you would have, that's good with the eye-hand coordination. If you have different colors, one thing you can do with different colors is after they have made the balls, is to make them in different colors and put them in a pattern. Say, uh, let's do red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, or I'm gonna put red, blue, red, blue, and then which one comes next? And let them make that and put it. Another thing that they could do with these little balls is if you have a stick or a straw is to then skewer them like beads and they could stick those on there um, like that. Now, this one is really ugly because that's what you get, the kind you're gonna get with a little kid. If you have one who doesn't have a lot of 
hand strength, like stronger in the mental development than they are in the physical development, you might need to make these balls yourself and then say, how about we make a pattern? Red, blue, red, blue, or smooth, rough, smooth, rough. You can come up with, you can come up with some ideas of alter, alternating um, patterns to, to do. The next one, of course, is snakes. So again, they break off a chunk, squish it together. That's really good. You should just kind of encourage them to squish it together every time just because it makes it hold it together. And then they do the snake. Now, again, with straight, I mean, flat, stiff hands, good way to start. You can do it on the table, of course. But the thing about the table is it gets so the middle part is smashed and the big part is still flat. And it's still a little bit abstract for them to realize that they have to open up their fingers in order to make it um, as long as they need. But on the table, you end up with something like this, where it's fat in one end and skinny on the other, in the middle, and the, or this piece falls off. So again, you might need to be there to help them see how they, if on the table, they roll a little bit and then stop and see where it's fat and roll on the fat part so they can roll it down. So when you've gotten them to make something, a snake or a rope, whatever you say, say, what shape can you make that? Not obviously the easiest one is a circle. You made a bracelet um, to make them even as they um, get older, keep on working that thing like this and spread their fingers out. That'll help them to realize how to spread that snake bigger. So then you have a long rope. And then maybe you can say, can you make that into an S? Now uh, you might have to draw on a piece of, write on a piece of paper, a big S for them to trace. Or it just might be, I'm gonna make a shape. Can you trace it? So you write, write it on the paper and can they make it a circle? Can they make a triangle? Can they make a square? That's getting kind of hard and they might need a couple of pieces, but to have it traced first and then as they get older to just do it and be able to see how to make that letter. But that's not the sort of thing an 18 month or a 30 month old is going to be able to do. Another, another thing to do with balls is to make pancakes. Now this is sort of what like the cookies, but they need to be bigger. And then they put them down on the tray or on the counter and flatten them down. And then you can have them cook them. So if here's you have a piece of paper or cardboard with a couple of circles so that it looks a little bit, you know, with the lines in it, so it looks a little bit like your stovetop. And if they have a plastic skillet, that's great. If they don't, don't worry about it. And then have them make it, and again, use the um, spatula and turn it over the other side and try to get it right in that circle. More hand development of spinning that. Now we have something that's a little bit harder, a little bit older, and it's using back, it can be either balls or snakes, but it would be using scissors and then have their scissors and cut it. Really good. This is a good one in that, um, it's firm. So many times we, we only teach children to use the scissors with paper and then the paper's all floppy and they have a really hard time using the scissors because they're so spending so much time trying to keep the paper flopping around. They forget what's going on with the scissors and it really takes a lot of thought. So to have something firm, which maybe it just is a snake that's not too long and that way they can hold on to it and cut it. Alternately, using a knife with the same thing, making it doesn't have to be a really good snake, just something that has a little bit of shape. And I'm going to use this popsicle stick as a knife and put it on the table and cut it. Here's where you can teach them how to hold a knife, that they need to have their finger on the top or on the side they can't hold it like this. It has to be like this or they will have a hard time cutting. Um, and to be careful 
not to cut your thumb. So as they're cutting, obviously they're not gonna hurt themselves, but if they're really going at it, chop, 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 and they hit themselves in the thumb, they will hear it. They, I'm, excuse me, they will feel it. And there was, there's one. Or you can use a, a butter knife, plastic knife, um, any sorts of thing. Another, as the kids get older and they're kind of tired of making um, balls and, and snakes and le uh, making letters out of snakes and cutting them into little pieces, um, they have moved up into building things with it. So get your Play-Doh, squish it good and, and tightly together so it's um, firm. And then they can build with teas. It's stick them in there. Maybe they can make it and then try to balance another piece of Play-Doh on the top. If you have a golf tee or they can make things where they put them together with um, straws too. What shape did you make? I made a triangle. It said the younger ones aren't going to likely discover this on their own, but once you show them that they can do it and step back and let their imagination soar, they will uh, come up with things. So the little bit of advice is that some of this stuff seems so obvious to us grown-ups that we've kind of lost the wonder of, of this. So you might just need to say, hey, look what I discovered. Look what happens when I do this. Wow, what do you think? Can you do that? Then step aside and let them see if they can do it. And you understand your child and know if, if, if the things that you're suggesting is frustrating, then you know, you will see the reaction that they always give you when they're frustrated or mad because they can't do something that you ask them to do. You, so you'll know when to back off. They can do that might be fun a couple of times. I don't see this being the kind of project that they will love and do over and over again. But as soon as I say that, then I, somebody proves me wrong. But if you were to take some balls, again, make them nice and firm, because when you put a, a popsicle stick or a straw in them, and I have a bunch of these dollar store straws, if you put or a straw in them and cut them a little bit, you can have some uh, little stick puppets and they could decorate them or they could just leave them, you know, like there's a face. And then if they make a couple of them, they could have little puppet shows. I think it's just mostly showing them that this can be whatever their, their imagination wants it to be. It could be a funny little puppet show that they give once or twice that tells a favorite nursery rhyme or a favorite story or just make it up as you go. The last one that I'm going to talk about is for the older kids is that if they take their big piece of Play-Doh and smash it out or roll it out, I didn't really mention rolling pins, if you don't have a rolling pin or have a rolling pin you want your child to use with the Play-Doh and you happen to not have a child-sized one, a cup will work. So one of the things that you can do if you have several kids, both young kids like um, toddlers and older kids, say four, five, six, and um, you can help the older ones play with the younger ones. And... That is really, really important. Again, I'm kind of getting off track, but that's really, really important because once children go away to school, they are segregated into age groups and older children lose out by not learning how to play with younger children. So while you have them at home during this COVID time, it's a real good time to take advantage of the children playing together. And so the older one, of course, is not going to have much interest for very long of making little balls and putting them in a bowl. But something like this, where you ask the older child to roll out a piece of Play-Doh, making it as smooth as they can, not in their hand, on the table, and then take some individual 
toys from their toy box. I brought some Legos, but it could be anything where then you, they just make the impression in the Play-Doh. They will think that's lots of fun. And this is just an example of three items that I have used. If you put those there, or if you have some little dinosaur shapes or some kind of animal things that come in those zoo tubes, any small things where they can make an impression, then put the Play-Doh down, put the pieces down and ask little brother, little sister, can you match these? And then watch or have your older child help the little child put them where they go. It's, it's sort of double duty where the, the older child is entertaining the younger child and the younger child is learning shapes and things. So I hope that these few ideas, if something that you've done with your children already, that, that there will still spark a new and creative way to present this so that your children will keep on thinking creatively and be able to come up with some new things. Thanks a lot for coming today to um, learn some more about homemade toys for toddlers and keep looking on the website because the summer reading program uh, registration is coming up now and there will be some new things, some in-person programs um, over the summer. For story time, we will be meeting in parks and, um, and but we will still continue with the uh, Zoom on Thursdays, but there will be some outside activities. So I hope you join in and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.